to Exo Nicole's She Comes First podcast, brought to you by European Wax Center. I'm your host and editor in chief of Exo Nicole, Brooke Obi. She Comes First is a podcast celebrating Black women who are prioritizing themselves in every way spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, sexually. We're talking about it all. Around here, soul care is self care. And we're talking to some of our favorite people about loving the essence of who we are. Today's guest is Brandy Evans. You may know her best as Mercedes, the queen bee and the OG down in the Valley of the Pink on the hit star show, Pea Valley. But Brandy's life story is just as compelling and powerful as Mercedes is on screen. And we're getting into all of it today. I'll best appreciate what I've been doing these past five months. Keep on, and this booty gonna be gone. So finally, we get to see your last dance, huh? Thank you so much, Brandy, for joining us on She Comes First. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Of course, so P-Valley is my absolute favorite show. Um, oh, it better be. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I mean, what what options do I have but to stand? Like, this is a show that is showing black, southern, queer culture mm-hmm. in a way, working class culture in a way that we rarely ever get to see on screen, mm-hmm. especially in you know a long term form like a TV series. So I am thrilled to have you here. Thank Mercedes you. is going through it um, this Ooh, season. Yes. There is so, I mean, it's every angle. Every angle is going. And I feel like there's so much, and you've said before that there are things about Mercedes' story that you can relate to that you mm-hmm. slip into. So when you were going through this season um, and you're dealing with COVID and you're dealing right. with all the other things that are going on in the world and you being a beautiful caregiver, as we see on your shirt as well right yeah. now. Caregiver shirt. Yes. <laughs> beautiful. Um, I'm wondering how you, what, what do you do to get into the headspace of Mercedes? Like, how do you know when it switches? Like, you're no longer Brandy or you're in you know, Mercedes. Is it the wig? Is it, what is it? You know, oh, that's so funny you say that. It's my <laughs> wig, child. I put that wig on. It's like, even when the makeup's done, it's just like, okay, I, Brandy gets her makeup done. But when you put on that wig, it is something about it where you're just like, oh, I'm Mercedes now. But you know what? There are sometimes when you don't see Mercedes in that wig. And in that moment, I'm probably channeling some hard, real life drama in my own life that can relate to Mercedes as well. Because I'm straight back. So real, like right now, up in here. <laughs> And with Mercedes, too, because it's like, child, we stretch, when we snatch that wig off, it's real life. So, yes, absolutely. When that wig comes on, I'm like, oh, I am the queen of the bank. <laughs> yes. That cold open in season two, um, the premiere, I feel like that is the oh. best cold open that has ever been on television. I'm going to stand you. on that. That car wash scene. I'm like, what's it like for you when you're reading the scripts and you're trying to figure out where, where season two is going to go, where Mercedes is going to go. And you see that for the first time. And then you see it on screen too, at the premiere. Oh, I just got chills thinking about it. That's probably one of my favorite openings as well. I remember reading it and um, our showrunner Katori Hall um, just did a beautiful job with that opening. And I remember reading and it was like pan up on our super shiro. And it was like um, red patent leather boots. I was like, ah! <laughs> Um, I was just, I was just so excited. It's so funny because was I, I didn't end up being in red, but I remember being red. They were like, were they silver? I can't remember, but I, I think they were still, they were silver. But I remember when it was written, it was like, it was supposed to be like red. And I was just like, I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is so amazing because it's just like walking your way through. And then it's just like Mercedes and that cowboy hat and that horse child. You can't tell me nothing. I was just so excited. It was the first Renaissance. I feel like Beyonce saw it and got inspired, and then she got Listen, up on it. <laughs> it was so funny because when we were shooting that, I think we had saw a picture, and I remember texting texting it to Katori. I'm like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "Are people?" We didn't know when B was going to drop anything. I was like, "Are people going to think we stole this from B?" Like, and we were already doing the same thing. So I guess great minds think alike, and I just think it's That's beautiful it. with that horse and everything. I was like, "People are never going to believe that there was no conversation had." This was always set for us. I'm sure it was always set for her. And it was just perfect timing. I love that. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the wigs, is there like music? You know, I know that so much of being a dancer and Mercedes is picking that song 
and yeah. she is gonna fall out the sky too. <laughs> um, so, you know, are there any songs or anything like that that you you think or that you play when you're when you're getting ready? You're trying to get yourself into the mind frame. You know what's funny, y'all? I'm so opposite. I will be in the trailer listening to Snow Allegra and Erica Badu, <laughs> like, and then I will come out and get because we hear so much trap and you know hip hop and just all mm -hmm. the things so I'm the girl that you know she might have Anita Baker going in the trailer like I just am just chill but when I go out there it's a whole nother world when that bass hits so yeah I'm totally different than real life like it's so funny I've learned about music on P-Valley because I'm like what's this who did this okay what, what song is that okay because I'm an old soul and I'm just loving the mellow chill in real life for me yes I love that so one of the other things that I have loved hearing about the show and behind the scenes and how it works is Katori Hall as a yes. showrunner um, and the way that she collaborates, the way that she works. So what, what's some of the uh, conversations that you and Katori have had about Mercedes and where we're going to see after the finale, where Mercedes is going to go maybe next season? Um, what's, what's that? Do you have those conversations or? We don't actually. Um, I love, Katori's very much so in the moment and that's why mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are like, why y'all tackling a pandemic? Because she's very much so in the moment and she wanted this to be a time capsule season two in a sense of this is what black people, um, sex workers, you know, some of the things that we were going through, some of the things that were said, you know, um, you've heard the comments, I can't catch it, this and that, and y'all know somebody that said that to you, you know, during the pandemic. So Period. she just wanted to keep it real. And so right now, I don't even know that Katori's even thinking about season three. I think she's just focused on getting through season two, seeing how everyone um, reacts to it. And I think it's gonna just come authentically. And child, we find out when we get the scripts. I didn't know Mercedes had a child, <laughs> season one. I didn't know Mercedes was the person that shot Montavious until season two. So, like, I'm going through it just like y'all. So, and I think that's what makes it so authentic <laughs> with all of our characters. We're just like, wait, what? I didn't know Mercedes had an entanglement. Like, it was just a <laughs> lot that I am learning as well along the way. Speaking of time capsule, something really important just happened on this episode of P Valley with Mercedes taking her young daughter um, to the abortion clinic to provide her with information mm -hmm. about whether or not she wanted to have an abortion and giving her the space to make that decision for herself, a decision that teenage Mercedes did not get to make for herself. So to see that scene on screen, um, to see abortion depicted, um, to see black women and black girls um, making these choices for themselves and for their futures in a way that isn't dramatic, isn't tense, isn't, you know, a distraught and traumatic experience, which that is some people's experience, but many, many people's experiences are just like the one depicted on Pea Valley with Terika just laying on Mercedes' lap and putting a heating pad over her and watching TV together. Um, so what was it like for you to be a part of a scene like that, knowing that depictions of abortion are just so rare on screen today? I thought it was beautiful. Um, that's my favorite episode. That's That, that storyline was just gorgeous to me um, and authentic. I think that a lot of times, like you say, um, it like you said, it's depicted in such a harsh and negative light when there are times when people just sit down and have the conversation. Um, for me specifically, I coached a little girl years ago when this happened to her and she was actually younger than 14. Um, and I don't know the conversations that happened with her and her mom and family behind the scenes, but I knew as her coach at that time that I was going to support whatever decision um, she made. Um, and I was there and, and she grew up to be a wonderful mother and, you know, graduated, saw all of her dreams happen, which is her choice. And so I love that her parents gave her the choice as well. And I, I just think that it's very beautiful for us to give our children a voice. Um, you know, just because they're young doesn't mean that their thoughts and their feelings are invalid. And I think that that's what Katori Hall was trying to show that, you know, everyone deserves a choice. No matter what age, you know, especially as a woman with your body, you deserve the chance to make that own decision. And it's even more sad now when you think about 
people don't have this choice now. We don't have the choice now. If something were to happen in this particular state, you know, they are being told by the government what to do with their bodies. And I just absolutely do not agree with that. Oh, 100% we are mm -hmm. on the same page there. I mean, as far as presenting options yes. um, for, for teens and for young people as well, I think the other really beautiful thing about this show is the showcasing of sexuality, yes. the showcasing of queerness. I feel like, I guess now that you have just learned <laughs> reading the scripts that Mercedes is queer too, <laughs> since we didn't necessarily see like, too oh, much of that in season yeah. one. She's bi curious for sure. <laughs> Tell me about that. Um, you know, and that's what I was asking too. I was like, so, What's happening? Is Mercedes, you know, identifying as a lesbian or is she identifying as bi? And so what we came up with is that she's bi curious and you'll learn a little bit more about that actually on this episode coming up on episode nine, um, just where her mindset is on um, the stance of her sexuality. Okay. I love that. I can't wait yeah. for that. Um, there has been, you know, a few people who are mad, but I think just so many more people who are so happy to see blackness explored in this it way. Be. Um, it's, it's life. Why period. are we not talking about it? Yes. Because it makes you uncomfortable? No. Yeah. And, and let's talk about why it makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, let's let's just yeah, get into I it. Think, you know? Especially like, in the matter. black community, you know, it's just like, it's like, you don't talk about it. Or I will say in the Southern black community, even more so, because I feel like I'm out here in Los Angeles and I can, I was coaching the Spark Kids, you know, years ago, and it could be a little boy or a little girl that could be 12 and be like, oh yeah, I'm gay. And it's like, it's fine. But you would never say that if I was back in Memphis, Tennessee, you know, a, a 13 mm -hmm. or a 14 year old couldn't just say that openly to their dance coach or to their mom and dad. It's just like, you don't talk about that or, you know, no, you're not, you'll grow out of it or go to church, you know? And I'm just like, it's, it's just a lot. And I'm very much so a PK. Um, but I and I believe in the Lord and all the things, but I also believe that we deserve a chance to live in our truth and and whatever makes you happy. I believe God is pleased with our happy, you know, with us being happy and being a good person. That's another thing that I think that the show does so well. It showcases everybody's spirituality. Yes. You know, you have voodoo on the show you have all of these different you know elements um you have the funerals i think the best way to showcase a person's yeah. culture is to see how they care for their mm -hmm. dead um there's just so much um in this show that is show like we can be all of these things right. at one time um there are there are specific ways of blackness in this region in chuckalisa yeah. in this space that we have created but it is an amalgamation mm -hmm. of so many different black communities um, I'm, I'm wondering for you now, season two, we're at the I end. I know, I just watched um, the last two episodes. <laughs> I literally cried. I'm not going to lie. I sat up and watched episode nine and then I just bust out crying in the middle of it. And I was like, what is wrong with me? I th I'm like, it's about to end and it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, people are hesitant to watch what is being labeled as black mm -hmm, trauma. Mm -hmm. um, I know the, the scene with Big Teak right. was very difficult. Um, the scene with Mercedes was very difficult. I do think there are places where, I mean, it, trauma is a part of, it's, it's a right. part of our inheritance, unfortunately, as black people in this country. Um, but I think there is a way to do it that is showcasing a love mm -hmm. for the audience, showcasing a love for the characters. Right. Um, and so how do you, um, especially in a scene that's going to be traumatic, how do you prepare for that? What's your process for putting that out into the world? Um, I try to connect it to myself. Um, specifically, my scenes with Azaria Carter, who plays Terika, um, I've had a stillbirth. Um, and all, um, in this moment, it's so weird that Terika is 14. My daughter Lyric would be 14 mm -hmm. this year as well. So for me, mm -hmm. when I think of that, I think this would be Lyric. So how would you hold your baby? How would you, you know, that, that heart, would you give your baby that choice, you know? And so I think of all these things and ever since I found out that I was a mother on Pea Valley and I found out how old she was, I was like, Katori, did you, did you know? You know, and of course she didn't know. This was already her storyline, but it's just so oh. crazy how art imitates life. And in a sense, I get my baby girl on camera. 
Um, so, and then I'm very close to Azaria as well. So that's why when people are just like, you know, I saw a rumor going around, like, that's a real child. Like, no, not in real life, but I hold her very dear to my heart. We're very close. And this is a moment, um, in a sense of me having my baby, um, to me, that's how I look at it. Um, with the Patrice and Mercedes character, my mom and I had a very toxic relationship growing up while she was not ever a psycho as um, Patrice, I have gotten my ass beat in a store publicly before and things of that. So I think of those type things and, and the trauma that it can have and the flashbacks that maybe I even have, um, have as a had as a child um, that still can think back to now. I remember ADR and seeing that scene. I was like, I wasn't in it. It was um, the younger Mercedes played that role. And I remember just asking him to let me see it. And when I saw it, I just immediately had that moment of kind of when you see Mercedes and Terika goes into the restroom and she comes back. And, and it was like, mm -hmm. as I watched that, they stopped it and they were like, heavy, huh? And I was still in a moment because I was flashed back into a Kroger beat down one time, you know, and it's just like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is very authentic. So a lot of times I think back to moments like that. I, I remember the jail scene in season one. While I've not been in jail, I think of my uncle James who passed away in jail and what must that have felt like. So I just try to tap into um, the reality of, of my own life and own world. That is really beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I know, I know you've shared before about um, your process of grief. Would you say that Pea Valley has been a part of your healing process? Absolutely. It's so therapeutic therapeutic it's 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 been so weird even the scene you know season one when mercedes um gets picked up by autumn from the jail when i got in that car i hadn't seen the car I hadn't seen anything so when i get in the car i was like this is the car my grandma used to drive grandma died right before we started filming p valley and i was just like bawling and i was like just heal it out outside of the um the pink episode one when Mercedes walks out and she has that moment in episode one with her mom the way it was set up in the back of that lot looked like Turrell Arkansas where my grandma was so it's like all of these moments I just try to tap into the reality of it because I feel like acting isn't acting it's you have to pull from real experience for people to believe it and it's reacting and that's just, I just have to try to jump I try to drop in to exactly where I am if I'm shooting a heavy scene I'm probably listening to some of the saddest music in the world in my trailer or things that remind me of people that can bring me to that emotion. So I'm always trying to find the realism in my acting. That is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. So I'm wondering um, what has Mercedes taught you oh. in these past two seasons about Brandy? Like, I feel like you must have be a different mm. person at this end Absolutely. of this season than when you first got the role for, for Mercedes. So what, what have you learned about yourself um, because of this character? Be gentle with yourself. I, I talked to Nico um, a lot, Uncle Clifford. We just were talking a little bit ago. Um, he, he actually said that to me season one. I take on a lot. Um, so season one, I had my mother with me being a caregiver and filming. Season two, I was flying back and forth, you know, pandemic of it all, I couldn't travel her. Um, and now in this exact moment, my mother is in the other room with COVID and shingles. And so just be gentle with yourself and know that the pendulum always has to swing back the other way soon. So just, you know, staying strong for sure, but knowing it's okay to break. Because yesterday was a whole meltdown day, but it was like, all right, we're back up today. You got to get back up. You got to keep fighting. So Mercedes teaches me that it's okay to break and know that it's okay to get back up. That, okay, we're going to get into all of that. I want to hear more about yeah. your caregiver journey. We're going to take a really quick break okay. and we're going to be right back with the lovely, lovely Brandy Evans. Thank you. Thank you. What's up, y'all? This is Brandi Evans, and you're listening to Exo Nicole's She Comes First, brought to you by European Wax Center.
We're back with P-Valley star Brandy Evans. We are getting into what it's like to be a caregiver. You have so much going on. You just shared so much about what your mom is dealing with right now mm -hmm. on top of the things that she's been dealing with right. and you've been a caregiver for many years now. Right. What right now, how is your heart? Heavy. How are you doing? Heavy. I'm just like, mm -hmm. you can't break down. Don't mess this makeup up. Mm -hmm. But um, very heavy, but very hopeful. Um, I'm just, I try to have, uh, oh my gosh, it's sitting right here. This is my five minute journal and it's my gratitude journal. So I, I got this last week and I write it in the morning and the night and I, you, it starts off like, I, this is, y'all, I, I challenge anyone to get this. So like you have to write three things you're grateful for three things that would make today great, and then your daily affirmation. And then at the end of the day, your highlights of the day, and then what did I learn today? Because so much can go wrong in this caregiving world, it's beautiful to just look back and be like, okay, well, yesterday, you know, went, went bad for you with some things, but look, mama got her medication, and she doesn't have a fever, and you know, you know, just things like that to just remind myself of the positives that are happening in my life. So I'm just trying to take time for me and it's a five minute journal because sometimes that's all I have in the day to stop and do something for myself. So I'm just trying to learn self care better for sure. I, that's so wonderful to hear. Do you have an affirmation that you said this morning or what, what was your journal telling yes, you to do today? I am healthy, I am happy and all things are working for my good. So yeah, that, that is today's, I'm healthy, I'm happy. And then, you know, what would make today great? Mama will get better. I will have a great interview. Um, I have a performance later on tonight that y'all probably don't hear about y'all because it's a good surprise. Um, and that, you know, today will just go better than yesterday. Beautiful. I'm going to write that down myself. Yes. I am healthy. Happy. I am happy. And all things are working. All things one? are working together things. for my good. So it will, it will all work out. Amen. Amen. I know that's yes. right. Um, how do you then balance? Um, so I know you're on a press tour right now, but how do you balance being a caregiver, acting responsibilities? Um, I know you're a dancer as well. How, how are you managing these different areas of your life? Um, <sighs> I, I love to hear about the five minutes a day, but you know, this is, you have it's so a much. Lot. I have an, first of all, my manager, Kelly Marie Dunn, standing ovation. She's amazing. Like she keeps my schedule together. So I can look in that calendar between her and Alicia, my assistant, they're keeping me together. I have a great support system with my friend, Sasha, who's also my natural hairstylist. Um, and just a lot of friends, Cherie, like when I think about this past weekend, you know, Kelly had me out in Little Rock working. But then I had the caregiver who had to go pick up water for mama. So she calls Cherie. Cherie comes to the house while she goes gets the water. Like I literally have a support system here, which is just amazing. Um, I'm just so grateful for my friends because I had to learn that I couldn't do it by myself because that's when that breakdown was happening. I didn't have time to journal. I didn't have time to do anything. Um, I'm so grateful for P Valley. Um, to be able to afford me a caregiver that can be in the house. I have Miss Edith in there with mom because I can't go near her because I can't get COVID, you know what I mean? So, you know, Miss Edith is in there double masked up and taking care of mama for me. So it is just a lot right now, but I'm very grateful for, you know, the support system. And I'm also interviewing new caregivers because I just had to release one yesterday. So it's just me and Miss Edith right now. She's like auntie, um, but also trying to not burn her out. So it's just like, okay. I don't know when, but one of these days, I'm going to have a moment where I can take a vacation, do something for myself. But right now, um, what would just make me happy is making sure that everything is managed correctly with my mom and my career. And then I can be like, all right, now, what are you going to do for yourself? Sit down and breathe. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's dream together. Yes. Mama is healed, whole, happy, mm -hmm. healthy, well. Everything is in order. Where are you going? What are you doing? Uh -huh. What does self care look for you and like for you in that moment? Child, I'm going to Santorini. 
Um, I'm going to um, Mykonos, where the other people, the other, the other names on my list. I'm going to Jamaica because I've never gone. And I'm taking some of my friends with me that have been in this struggle bus with me. I'm taking Sasha. I'm taking Latrice. You know what I mean? I'm taking all my friends too. Um, so we can just have a moment of peace. I am turning my phone off. I ain't reading no emails. <laughs> and I am, I am just laying out and relaxing. I love that. Mm -hmm. Now, what, at this stage, with all that you know, mm -hmm. with all that you've learned, mm -hmm. are there any things that you would go back and tell a younger version of yourself? Let's say 10 years ago. Oh my gosh, 10 years ago. 10 years ago, are yes. you an English teacher at this point? No, I ago? just got out of it, I just left. But when I, if 10 years ago, I would say, it's okay, just, baby steps. It's okay. You don't have to have it all right now. I would say be grateful. I would say stay in your lane. Um, because a lot of times I, I think the school teacher in me, um, is so used to being, you know, Oh, we got to do this got to, you know, got to help somebody got girl sit down and let people do their jobs in the roles that they are hired for and just be the talent. So even I said that today to my makeup artist, I was like, Okay, so when I go to set today, I'm just going to shut up and sit in my lane and stay in it. I'm always like, if I see somebody struggling, I'm like trying to help. And I think that's the caregiver in me, the teacher in me, the dance coach in me, trying to fix everybody else. But what I'm learning is that makes it harder on myself and puts more anxiety on me. When, girl, you can just breathe, but it's something that triggers me. And I'm just like, I got to help them. And I'm like, no, you don't. Help yourself by shutting up sometimes. Just stay right here. It's okay. Just stay right here. <laughs> and me and my friend have this little thing. We do this right here. And we were just like, when we get out of, out of our lane, just do that. And yesterday on set, she was just, I was trying to help somebody do something that had nothing to do with me. And she was like, and I was like, ooh, I'm going to get back in my lane. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh, Accountability lane. partner. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. So do you, um, you know, who are the people in your life that you know are going to check you? Ooh. Um, who, who, who could come to you and say, now, Brandy, that wasn't right. I think everybody, because now, Brandy, I have thick skin. Really? I really appreciate that. Even if I'm like, Ooh, for a minute, my little feelings might be hurt, but I am so grateful when people tell me stuff like that because you don't know and they might be helping me before I sabotage my own self or career. So I am always appreciative of that. And I know some people are like, nah, -uh, you don't know me like that. You can't say that to me. Well, sometimes it, it can be a stranger. Sometimes it's God sending somebody to tell you to shut up before you lose a job or whatever. So for me, I'm very open to that. But I think people are afraid to tell me things because they might think that I'll take it like the wrong way because some people do but i i am not and i always tell people like say to me you're acting like diana because back in the day honey my mama was a hothead and so i try to be very conscious of what i can be and um the gemini in me could try to get out of control so i'm like nope like check me it's okay to be like you need a moment boo because brandy you you tripping like tell me that so i appreciate that sasha is never gonna bite her tongue that's my bestie at all. all my friends in Memphis, they don't care about no Pea Valley. They don't care about no red carpets. They'll be like, baby, you know, like you better find it, like pull it together. Cause I don't know who you think you're talking to. And so I appreciate friends like that. And my castmates will do it. Nico will tell me in a minute, like you tripping. You're like, thank you. Thank you. I'm back. You know, uh, that's wonderful. If you are, I, I saw it on Instagram, you have posted something about, um, basically knowing when you are on those red carpets, like, the, what the boundaries are people like to touch yeah. i did see you at the rap shit premiere you look so good Thank um you. i did I, I gave you 50 feet i did not come <laughs> you, but, so i was happy about that but how how do you manage that you know um being in a space and being a beloved character that you know people want to people want to meet in real life people are happy to see out and about yeah. what how do you set boundaries um in your personal life and you know in your professional life um, and I'm trying to find, that's a great question. I try to find the light way because I don't want people to think like, Ooh, she's stuck up. She don't want nobody to touch her. She don't want nobody to talk to her. Absolutely not that. Like, girl, we can sit up and have all the conversation in the world. We can chit chat, 
But what I've noticed is it becomes handsy, and I think it's because of the character I play. And it's just like, baby, we're not in Chuck Lisa now. Like, please don't just grab and touch. And even Mercedes said, hands to yourself. So I think those things to me, I feel like are breaking boundaries. I love the love. And I know that without the love from our fans, we wouldn't be anywhere. So I absolutely appreciate that. But my first and foremost thing is I have to come home to my mother. And I don't want to bring anything to her. So I have to be cautious with that. And I'm like, you know, the hugging in the club, we all sweaty and all like, please y'all, I will take all the pictures. And I usually say yes to pictures unless it becomes too much. If we're in a mall, you can't do that. Y'all, I'm never going to get out the mall. I'm here to just pick up something and leave. And so that's what I'm trying to explain to people. Like, it's not that I don't want to take that picture with you, but now if so-and-so saw me take a picture, now here comes a whole meet and greet and I got to get back to the house to mama. I was just coming in here real quick to get a pair of stockings, you know, like, so <laughs> it's things like that, that I think sometimes they don't understand or I remember I had a fan get so upset and I literally had my AirPod in and I'm having the doctor tell me about a surgery that mama's got to have now. So it's just like, like, hey, and I'm just like, thank you so much. And, you know, and I'm just trying to keep going. And they're just like, like, you can't take a picture. And I'm just like, you don't even know that I'm trying not to break down and cry right now because I'm hearing that my mom has to have surgery. So I think a lot of times if we all as um, a community and as human beings in life could just have more empathy. It happened to me in Memphis coming home the other day. I was on the phone with my brother trying to update him about his mother. And I'm like, you know, mom, mama didn't have a good doctor's appointment. This is what's happening. I go into the airport. I turn around and somebody's got a camera in my face. Hey, snap, 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 snap. And I'm just like, no, y'all speak first. And Samuel L. Jackson taught me about that. He checked me one day about 15 years ago. I will never forget. It's about 10 years ago, actually. I will never forget it. And I was just so excited. Like we all are like, Samuel, I was like, I was like, hey, can I get a picture with you? And he was like, how are you? What is your name? I'm doing well today. Thank you for asking. And I was like, ooh. And I wasn't mad. I was just like, wow. For me, I took it as, like I said, I like to hear these things. I thought, never do that to someone again. And I never knew how it felt until the roles were reversed. And it's just like for people to just run up on you with a camera and they didn't even say hello. That's not even common courtesy, y'all. So that's that's where I come from. So I'm so glad that we're saying this out loud so everybody can hear it. Like, hey, girl, my name is Kelly. You know, like, you mind if we get a picture? And if I say no, it's not a bad thing because I'm always going to be like, oh, I'm not really taking pictures today. But thank you so much, you know, for lo loving us and watching the show. And that just shows, you know, a, a strength in, of yourself and love for yourself that you would, you're able to speak up and set those boundaries. So I yeah. hope people respect that. And I hope people learn to do that themselves. I think that might be a little bit of the frustration that people have because they're not setting those right. boundaries in their own lives. Mm -hmm. Like, well, how does she mm -hmm. get to do it? Like, we can all do right. it. We can all set yeah, those boundaries. Yeah, and you don't have to hug everyone. Like, that's transfer yeah. of energy. You do not yeah. have to hug. Put your personal body against someone else's. Yeah. That is not a requirement for you. Yeah. yeah, you have such a beautiful soul, such a beautiful spirit. Thank you. Um, I, I've just really enjoyed everything that you have shared today. I'm wondering, as a wrap question, what do you hope your legacy will be? Uh, that she was authentic. Um, she was loyal and she was a good person. I think that being a good person is like, I don't need the success any of that that is great but i i'm trying to go to heaven you know what i mean and i want to be a good person i want to do right by people um and i think that's where happiness comes from beautiful well i'm sending so much yeah. good energy and healing energy to your mom and to you thank, thank you, you so, so much. much appreciate your time thank you thank you for having me this is wonderful oh good i'm so glad I am so grateful for Brandi Evans coming into the room and sharing all that she shared with us. I'm taking away from this episode her affirmation, I am healthy, I am happy, and all things are working together for my good. And I hope you have something that you could take away from this episode as well. A huge thank you to European Wax Center for sponsoring She Comes First and reminding us that soul care is self-care and we deserve to experience a new state of smooth. If you haven't already, make waxing a part of your self-care routine and visit a European Wax Center near you. 
They have locations nationwide, and if it's your first wax, it's free. You can learn more at www.waxcenter.com and follow them on Instagram at European Wax. And as always, we wanna hear from you. What are your affirmations? How are you prioritizing yourself? Hit us up on social media and let us know at XO Nicole. Until next time.